everyone. Welcome to uh, this session. It's called Create Evolving NFTs on Polygon. Uh, but first, I'm Steph. I'm a DevRel engineer at Polygon. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Oceans404, but the O is a zero. It's kind of hard to read. Um, but we're talking about evolving NFTs. I just wanted to throw this up because this is kind of my ETH global evolution. The first time I was on the main stage was virtually on Zoom and then in Amsterdam. So it's pretty cool to be back in Mexico as a sponsor, full circle. Okay, so let's talk about NFTs. Um, and we'll just start with like fundamentals. So NFTs allow for the creation of non-fungible tokens for tracking ownership of different things. So we've seen that as digital, digital collectibles like the Board Ape Yacht Club collection, but we've also seen physical properties being sold as NFTs um, and then even assets with negative value like loans. Uh, but this is just an ERC721 um, token standard. So you can see all the required functions and also events. Uh, if you create an NFT contract, you'll probably um, extend a contract like this. And you'll have to have all of these uh, functions and events as part of your NFT. This is my PFP. It's a doodle. Uh, but what is really important about it is the token URI. So the image the name, the description, and all of the different attributes that describe this uh, NFT. So you can see the face has a happy note, the hair is long and purple, the body is a white puffer. And one of the things about NFTs uh, historically is that if they're used for collectibles like my doodle, um, it's pretty important that these images and also the metadata are immutable so that they don't change so that this stays a rare asset for uh, different features that it has that the rest of the collection doesn't have. So with collectibles, it does make sense to have immutability, but can you think of any other use cases where maybe immutable assets aren't as fun or they just don't fit the problem statement? I thought of a few. So the first one is in gaming. If you have NFTs or assets that level up or change the way they look based on different things that happen in the game, Another thing I thought about was a COVID passport. So I have this really annoying piece of paper I have to carry around, and then every time I get a vaccine or a booster, somebody like physically writes it into my um, passport, which is pretty ridiculous. I think that should be on chain. Um, so a digital passport is something that could be a cool evolving NFT. Also baseball cards. Uh, I'm from LA, so I watch the Dodgers. Hopefully Cody Bellinger never leaves, but if he does, his baseball card team would change and this um, baseball card wouldn't be relevant anymore. And then this is just kind of a dig at Board Ape Yacht Club because static NFTs are boring. <laughs> but how are we gonna build this? So we're going to use Polygon POS and Tableland. Just to give you a quick refresher on Polygon, it's an Ethereum scaling solution. It's great because transactions are really fast. They're low cost. Um, we're also going carbon negative this year, which I'm really excited about, so nice and sustainable. And then Tableland, which you might have heard about. Uh, I don't think they're here, so I'll just talk about it. But Tableland lets us write SQL to create tables to store mutable NFT metadata that is governed by immutable rules. And the Tableland data exists on both Polygon and Mumbai, so whichever network you choose to deploy on, uh, you'll be able to do that. And so um, in this DAP that I created, I made two different tables, a main table and an attributes table. So the main table has ID, name, description, and image. And then the attributes table has all of the different trait types and values that you would see as part of an NFT. So this is an example of one that I made today. I called it Tequila NFT. My Spanish has been <laughs> pretty bad this trip, but I can always say the word tequila. So that's what we went with for this demo. Uh, but just to go back to the doodle really quick, you can see that the attributes are the same way, where it's an array of different objects, um, and each object has a trait type as well as a value. Cool. So I created some uh, drink NFTs. I had five different images that um, we can update, and you can see that the glass goes down, down, down. 
I actually sent these to some of my friends who, in the, who are in this room. Christina, you have one. Kartik and Jacob, I also sent you drinks because I thought you deserved them. Uh, but I'm going to modify your NFTs to drain your drinks. And I'll show you how to do that, which is pretty rude in the real world. Don't drink your friend's drinks, but <laughs> we'll do it today. So we're going to mutate the image URL, and then we'll also mutate different attributes. Um, two callouts for this. The first one is just that uh, the default for Tableland is that you can only mutate data if you are the contract owner. So if you've deployed it, you can mutate it. But you can override that behavior by adding something called a table land controller, which allows you to have like the owner of the NFT mutate it if you were interested in that type of behavior. And then the other call out for this demo is we're going to be manually updating the NFT just like from the command line. But you could do this automatically with chain link keepers or a different solution like that. So let's get to the code. I created a GitHub repo for this. Um, it's just under my GitHub, Oceans 404. It's called Mutable NFTs, uh, Table, Land, and Polygon. I'm pretty proud of the readme. So <laughs> take a look at that if you wanted to duplicate this or do it in your own projects. Um, it just has the two intros. And then building instructions in case you wanted to deploy this yourself, you would just create an, a .env file, add three different API keys for our Mumbai Alchemy uh, key, Polyscan, and then your private key. And then you just install, and you could run this smart contract to create your own contract. Um, where was I? Let me get into the code. OK. So the first thing that's pretty specific to my tequila NFTs are that uh, this custom metadata generation, I'm just setting it. It's a naive solution. I don't have trait randomness for these NFTs. I have three different tequila types and two different drink names. And they're being um, randomly added as attributes, attribute values. These are just the starter values. Um, I'll show you how to update these values since that's kind of uh, the interesting part of this demo but I just wanted to give you a sense of how we're creating the, the metadata first. So uh, the first thing I did was just deployed that smart contract, and I'll show you the polyscan of that. So this is the smart contract, and then each of the table land tables also has its own um, transaction, and it's actually a little NFT, which is kind of cool. I didn't know that. But each of these main table and attributes table is minted as an NFT that you also own as the contract creator. So kind of fun. OK. So let's get to updating the metadata. Like I said, I already deployed this. Uh, but we're going to run the update metadata function to change some of these values around. So I created a big block so you can probably update these on your own. But there's two different update lines that I was playing with today. The first one is changing the image. So uh, the main table had that image property. Um, so I'm going to change the image to an empty uh, tequila cup where ID is zero. So just to prove that we're actually doing this, this is the uh, NFT. It is full. And we're going to change this image so that it's empty and it's an on-chain transaction. OK, so I have the image link here. I am pinning it on IPFS, and it's stored decentralized in storage. But I'm just going to change this so that it has this new image. And then I'll save this file, and then I'll run the script to update metadata. And we should see this image change on OpenSea. So just going into my terminal, I'll clear that out so it's a little easier to see. Uh, but it's just an npx hardhat run script slash update metadata. And you can see the network is Polygon Mumbai. So this is just doing a read of the different tables that we already have. Um, and it is updating that image. 
And once it's updated, we'll see the transaction hash and be able to look at that on Polyscan. Cool. Oops. So again, back in the code, we were just updating that main table with the new image where ID equals zero. And I really like table land because you can write SQL queries, uh, which is just super user friendly, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna put in that uh, hash transaction. And you can see it was successful. And if you look at the input, you can actually see when you decode, um, this happened on chain, so, oops. So you can see that this image changed where ID is zero. And now, if we go back to this NFT, I think we'll have to run a refresh on the metadata because OpenSea is a little slow. But in a minute, we should see a completely new image that is an empty cup. Oh, not yet. All right. Empty cup. Okay, so that worked for, <laughs> nobody has ever cheered for an empty drink before. <laughs> okay, so that's how you would update an image, but you can also do this for the actual metadata properties. So right now, uh, the drink name is Margarita, and the tequila type is Añejo. Somebody correct that, yes? Okay, you look like you know your tequilas. What is your favorite type of drink? We're gonna change this metadata. Tequila Sunrise? Okay. That's the orange juice one, right? <laughs> no shade. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna change this value to a Tequila Sunrise. I commented out that line above just so that we have it for easier reference, but we're looking for trait type drink name and we're updating value to Tequila Sunrise where main ID is zero because it's that first ID. So I'm gonna run update metadata one more time. We'll get a new transaction hash, and hopefully we'll see a tequila sunrise. And I'm not super artistic, but if you were and you wanted to play with SVG data, you could um, do fun things with pixel art uh, to actually make it look like the drinks. Someday I'll, I'll get to that level of artistry. So we're just back in Polyscan looking for that new transaction. It was successful 23 seconds ago. Again, we'll decode that input data. And we see Tequila Sunrise at ID zero. So let's refresh the metadata one more time. and we have an empty tequila sunrise. Woo! <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go back to my slides. Cool, so yeah, check out that repo. Um, I hope it's relatively easy for you all to uh, change values and stuff in case you wanted to create some mutable uh, NFTs this weekend. But just wanted to go over the Polygon prizes one more time. We have four different prize categories for the following problem statements. So public goods, refi, which is regenerative finance, uh, metaverse or gaming, and then the best UX or user onboarding experience to your DAP. So really excited to see what you all create. We'll probably give away two to three um, prizes in each of these categories. And then here's some developer resources if you wanna take a picture of that. Um, they're also all online, so you should be able to find everything. If you can't, come complain to me because that's bad user experience. Cool, and then this is our Polygon Devs Twitter. Uh, a lot of my teammates aren't here this weekend, but they love to see what you're building, so tweet at them and use the hashtag on Polygon so that we can amplify your work. And then, last but not least, wag me. I'm in the middle next to Jordy. This is, this is an iconic photo because he is, 
um, like the creator of ZK EVM, and I'm not worthy to be standing next to him, but fun photo. All right, thank you so much. Feel free to come up to me and ask any more questions or just chat, tell me what you're building. And yeah, have a great weekend.